everyone. Welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me, as always, is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashkan Karbashushan to discuss the latest hubbub, uh, re YouTube tightening their verification rules. And sub question Can YouTube do anything right? She said that. I didn't. Um, he wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> I said possibly we can ask if YouTube can do anything right. Um, so here's the thing. I think fundamentally YouTube's challenge is the size. We've covered this. This is a byproduct of their sheer size and scale and you know, trying to maintain some order, especially if like you've seen this, right? I mean, you've seen like people commenting and it's Donald Trump, but it's not really Donald Trump. But if like 15 years ago or 10 years ago you started off as Donald Trump and you have like 200,000 fol you know, fans, followers, subscribers, you know, it's kind of weird. So I understand that that's one issue. There's many other issues, let's be candid. But the bigger, I think, specifically here is YouTube needs to like almost hire users, YouTubers, to help make decisions. The problem with YouTube is when Susan... You mean YouTubers like creators or YouTubers like users of the platform? No. Creators okay. who produce content. Right. I'll be at YouTube shindigs and one of their execs will kind of reference jokingly that like they start a YouTube channel. They need to be users in that sense. They need to be creators. Okay. Because it doesn't make sense if you sit down with, I mean PewDiePie she wouldn't sit down with because of the swastika factor there, but it doesn't make sense if you want to come up with policy and you kind of talk to somebody with like 20 million subscribers. That's not representative of the masses who have accounts on YouTube. I'm not saying this is a knock, but if you are a YouTuber, an influencer, you're probably, it's like a vain crowd. You're driven by vanity. Like think of it, you're like, I'm on front of the camera talking. You gotta be demented to do this, right? <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? So it's like, you're taking away their verifications. What do you think is gonna be their reaction? And it's like, to me, it's like the three easiest things to do as a manager or as a leader is thank you, I'm sorry, and please. Those things don't cost anything. I dole them out 50 times a day. But with YouTube, it seems like the simplest of things, a stupid verification check. And I think, you know, they take that away and then they're surprised at the reaction. So when even that throws them off, it's not like they wake up maliciously. It's not like Donald Trump, who's like, who am I gonna pick a fight with today? <laughs> oh yeah, Mother Teresa. You know, she's nasty, you know? Like, he, he would probably say that about her. That would be like a compliment he gives. So I just feel like maybe if YouTube actually said, we're gonna pluck, it'll change every few months so these people don't have a big head. We're gonna have a group of five to 10 representative creators who don't have 20, like I'm not gonna have tea time with Shane Dawson and ask him what he thinks about something. Shane Dawson is not your normal creator, you know, props to him, he runs an empire, you know. It's like Watch Mojo, we're not your representative, you know. So they need to have like a group, a, a, a focus, but more than a focus group, like literally have these people say, well, if we're gonna do this, how do you feel about this? And then they would maybe get a little bit of sense of reality because I don't understand the kind of blind spots that this, this group of decision makers has you know, the sec, and then it's like, it's always the same thing. It's like they do something and like within like 55 minutes, Susan's on Twitter apologizing for like, you know. Yeah, I have to our creators and users, I'm sorry for the frustration and hurt that we caused with our new approach to verification. While trying to make improvements, we missed the mark. As I write this, we're uh, working to address your concerns and we'll have more updates soon. She could basically have that in a <laughs> scheduled post. <laughs> I like Susan a lot. I think Susan, in terms of like, I have said it, it's, it's a platform caught between a risk, uh, rock and a hard place. But what I always scratch my head uh, is like the self-inflicted bullet wounds. Like, you know, the, the Nazis using your platform, I get it, you're not a neo-Nazi, you would not have thought of that. The pedophiles, I'm hoping you're not a pedophile, you're not gonna think of that. You know, all of these things, I kind of get it, but these self-inflicted wounds, just is draining because, you know, we gotta, we gotta kind of, um, and, and that's the issue, that like YouTube has this fundamental problem where then sometimes they do these things and you're like, they want an applause, but they're kind of like red herrings. Where it's like, you know, when they made the change to the claims where they're like, ooh, if, um, you know, if when, when claimants make auto, um, manual claims, they can no longer do A, B, and C. And like you can tell, they want an applause and they want you to kind of erect a, a statue in their honor. 
But then you're like, but manual claims are half a percentage. Not half of claims, 0.5% of the, the, the total claims. So it's kind of a non-factor, right? Anyway, I'll say um, they should just have 10, 15, 30 creators, part of this group that kind of gives them you know, feedback on these possible changes. And these creators should have 50 fans to you know 500,000 fans, but like definitely less than like a million. Or maybe that's another, but you get the point. Like they just need to be a bit more in tune with what a normal, typical creator would feel about their changes. Fair enough. So what do you guys think? Can YouTube do anything right? <laughs> Let us know in the comments on YouTube, and we'll see you next time.